Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. In an astonishing development, astronomers have recently discovered that several dozen stars are rapidly making their way out of the Milky Way galaxy. Very similar stars. And this is a strange coincidence indeed. Is this happening for natural reasons? Or might it be happening by design? And if so, could a hyper-advanced civilization really make something like this happen? And why would they do so in the first place? All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. I am still here in Greenville, South Carolina, going to be watching my son perform in a jazz ensemble at Clemson University tonight. That, of course, is more important to me than anything, and even though it may mean that I'm going to miss the launch of Starship tomorrow, well, these sorts of things happen. However, I do have a flight uh, booked for tomorrow afternoon, also hotels reserved, etc., in the anticipation that space SpaceX may not be able to get Starship off the ground on the first attempt, in which case I'll be there in person. But if not, I will be covering the whole thing remotely. And even if I do arrive there too late, I would certainly like to see what the aftermath of the launch is like. See whether or not there's any damage to the launch facility this time around, or if that water-cooled plate did indeed do its job. Also get the reactions of some of the locals after all these months of waiting in anticipation. Regardless, if that's something you'd like to support, all the details are in the description. But let's get on to something a bit more fantastic, and that is the world of stellar engineering. Now, those of us who wonder about the Fermi paradox and the idea that there should be a galaxy full of civilizations given the age of the galaxy and the relative age of our solar system compared to other solar systems which are billions of years older than ours, there should be civilizations crawling around the Milky Way galaxy, and yet we don't seem to see many indications of them. Or do we? Is it possible that we are seeing evidence of hyper-advanced civilizations and that the evidence of their activity occurring right in front of our noses and we just don't recognize it for what it is? And I'm talking about the incredible and very, very controversial field of stellar engineering, the idea of instead of using spacecraft to travel from star to star, you simply move your solar system. Or there may be other reasons to move stars as well. And one particular example of stars in motion that we've discovered recently that are quite mysterious are several dozen stars similar stars, by the way, similar classifications of stars, all of which seem to be making their way out of the Milky Way galaxy at a very high rate of speed. And although there may be some good natural explanations as to why this is happening, should we also consider an artificial explanation? Might there be a reason for extremely advanced civilizations to send these kinds of stars out of the galaxy? Why would they want to do that, and how could they do it? Well, interestingly enough, another recent discovery may answer those very questions. The discovery came about as a result of the Gaia mission from the European Space Agency, which is conducting a census of all of the stars in the Milky Way galaxy and compiling a galactic map of sorts. But not only is it compiling a list of all the stars, where they might be, but also how they're moving through the galaxy. Because if stars behave differently, that is to say, if they are moving differently than the rest of the stars, in the galaxy, that suggests that they may have come from somewhere else and may have formed in this region of space before the galaxy even came into existence. However, one particular discovery focused on 417 O-type stars and 1335 BE-type stars. Now, these are young, hot stars that tend to have fairly short lifespans. 
42 of these stars were newly identified, by the way, and in this census, they found 69 BE runaway stars. That is to say, 5.2% of the stars in the BE type star catalog are on their way out of the galaxy. Now that is bizarre indeed, and 106 O-type stars are also on their way out of the galaxy. That's 25.4% of the stars that are O-type in the catalog heading out of the damn galaxy. Now, how is that possible? We're talking a quarter of all O-type stars. These young, hot stars that have short lifespans are, for some reason, leaving the galaxy and heading into intergalactic space. Now, to explain this, the researchers have come up with two natural explanations or scenarios that explain why these types of stars tend to get ejected from the galaxy. One is called the Dynamic Ejection Scenario, or DES, and the other is the Binary Supernova Scenario, or BSS. We'll talk about the less obvious one first. The Dynamic Ejection Scenario talks about the idea that these types of stars tend to form in tightly packed clusters. Therefore, from time to time, they have close encounters with one another, and during these incredibly violent gravitational slingshot encounters, stars get hurled out of the galaxy at high velocities. This does make a great deal of sense, however, it also assumes that the O-type stars have to be forming in these tightly packed regions of space far more often than any other type of star, which is not necessarily a proven concept at all. And then you also have the binary supernova scenario. This one I find to be a little bit more believable. The idea that O-type stars tend to form in binaries with one another. One member of the pair goes supernova before the other one does and kicks its companion star out of the galaxy in the process while it's destroying itself. Again, I find this to be a pretty compelling explanation, but it doesn't really happen to 25% of all the O-type stars that form. Now, of course, the researchers who are very interested in making sure that their future careers are secure have not explored any sort of artificial explanation for this phenomenon, because that is a great way to destroy your credibility, as Avi Loeb sadly has done when he started talking about things like this, but there is actually an artificial explanation. If indeed hyper-advanced civilizations are able to move stars, and we're going to get into how you could actually do that, the most obvious star that you would try to get rid of, eject out of the galaxy, would be these ultra-hot O-type stars with short lifespans, because if you don't get rid of them, they're going to go supernova and bathe every star system within about a thousand light years in lethal radiation, potentially killing off trillions of life forms and wiping out many civilizations in the process. So, an extremely advanced civilization who's concerned about the future of other life forms throughout the galaxy, if they had such a capability, would try to eject these highly dangerous stars out of the galaxy before they could do any harm. But again, how would they do something like this? Well, by means of an insane megastructure known as a stellar engine or a Shkodov thruster. The idea is simple, at least in theory. It's a colossal arc-shaped mirror with the concave side facing the star. Builders place the mirror at an arbitrary distance where gravitational attraction from the sun is balanced out by the outward pressure of the solar radiation. The mirror thus becomes a stable, static satellite in equilibrium between gravity's tug and the sunlight's push. 
Solar radiation then reflects off the mirror's inner curved surface back toward the sun, effectively pushing the star with its own sunlight. The reflected energy produces a tiny net thrust. Yeah, not a whole lot, and it takes a long time for a Schadoff thruster to work, but if you have millions of years to work with, because it does take many millions of years for an O-type star to finally go supernova, that's plenty of time for a Schadoff thruster to do its job and get the star out of the galaxy before it kills anyone. But why go small if you can go big? At the University of Illinois, there was a physicist named Dr. Matthew Kaplan who came up with an idea called a Kaplan thruster that provides a whole lot more velocity to a star. The idea is to put a giant fusion reactor, or rather two fusion reactors, into orbit around the sun and power it with at least a partial Dyson sphere, which gathers up the energy generated generated by the sun because you're going to need all that energy to do what this thruster is supposed to do, and that is to combine enormous amounts of helium into radioactive oxygen and to fire that oxygen into the star, actually providing thrust pushing the star with an enormous jet of radioactive oxygen and in the same process firing a second jet of hydrogen into the star in order to keep this engine at station keeping so it doesn't actually plunge into the sun. This radical super technology would provide a lot more thrust to a sun and get it out of the galaxy a lot more expeditiously. By the way, it gathers up all all of this material, all of this helium and hydrogen from the solar wind like a Bussard ramjet. And if you're not familiar with a Bussard ramjet, well, I've got some information about that type of propulsion system linked at the end of this video. So with this particular type of thruster, you could get it up to a necessary velocity similar to what we're observing in the stars that were spotted in the Gaia survey in a few hundred thousand years instead of millions of years, allowing a civilization to get these dangerous stars away from any civilizations or any organic life before they went supernova. Okay, all of this is well and good in theory, but is there any proof whatsoever that this is what is actually happening. Have we seen any evidence of any megastructures existing in close proximity to any of these stars? Well, frankly, we haven't made any effort to try to find these sorts of things. However, we have found something eerily similar in the constellation of Sagittarius. The star in question is VVVWIT08. By the way, the WIT stands for what is this or what the hell is this? And as you can see, it's a strange object indeed. Something elliptical, something opaque, and something very strange indeed blocked out 97% of this particular star's light. And by the way, it's a red giant. So whatever this object is in orbit around the star, it is in enormous indeed. Now what you're looking at right now is VVVWIT7, which is a colossal ring system in orbit around a star that provided a similar dimming. However, it had a number of gaps that were consistent with a giant ring system. And by giant, we're talking nearly a hundred million kilometers across. Now, Explaining how something like this came into existence and why a ring system this colossal, which contains far more matter than exists in our entire solar system, would end up orbiting a planet instead of the star itself, well, that's a very strange phenomenon indeed that has so far defied explanation. But at least this is a ring system similar to Saturn, although much, much bigger, and something that we can explain. VVVWIT08 defies all explanation. It has no gaps. Instead, we're talking about a solid, opaque object that is 
absolutely enormous. We're talking perhaps 150 million kilometers across, and it's a disk with a very well-defined edge, meaning that it's not a dust cloud. Whatever it is, it has to be solid. And once again, it bears no resemblance to a ring system, but instead an unnaturally gigantic oval. And that is very strange indeed. And fortunately, we only observed this object passing in front of the star once and haven't really focused a great deal of effort on studying it again. This is very unfortunate because this may be the best candidate for an alien megastructure that we've found yet because it isn't a star, it isn't a planet, it isn't a dust cloud, it isn't a ring system, it isn't anything that we have detected in astronomical science up to this point, or at least we don't think it is. And if it isn't any of those things, then it might be an artificial construct. Oh, by the way, not a black hole either, because a black hole would create a gravitational lensing effect, which we didn't see with this object either. Either. So what the hell is it? Well, even if it is a megastructure, what does it have to do with a Shkodov thruster? Well, here's the spookiest thing of all. This star, VVVWIT08, is on its way out of the galaxy. It's traveling at an unnatural speed and heading into intergalactic space. Talk about a strange coincidence. Now, of course, this isn't an O-class star, but it is a red giant or a star nearing the end of its life cycle, so it too could go supernova. However, it might not. And here's another interesting question. If indeed they are relocating this star outside the galaxy, why would they do so? Well, I have my own personal theory, although I'm almost certainly wrong about this, but a few billion years from now, our galaxy is going to be colliding with the Andromeda galaxy with unforeseen consequences. Now, many astronomers think that it isn't going to be that cataclysmic for the inhabitants of either galaxy, but at the same time, it is going to rip apart the structure of both galaxies. Might a civilization be trying to relocate their own society to a galaxy that's going to stay clear of this cataclysm? And by the way, there is a galaxy in our local group that will stay clear of this collision, and that's the Triangulum Galaxy that you're seeing on the left side of your screen. That galaxy will remain safe while virtually all the rest of the galaxies in the local group are involved in this collision. And it's also worth noting that the supermassive black holes at the center of both of these galaxies are likely going to collide as well, creating a new supermassive black hole, or possibly kicking one of the black holes out of the new galaxy that has just formed, again with unforeseen consequences. Might a civilization far more advanced than ours know what's coming and be trying to get out of Dodge? Well, that of course is impossible to say, but a couple of facts are very clear. Number one, a high percentage of extremely dangerous stars that are likely to go supernova are leaving the galaxy for some reason. And number two, we have found another star with a suspected alien megastructure in orbit around it that's also on its way out of the galaxy. Those are interesting coincidences, and in my opinion, worth further investigation. At the very least, we should check out all of these O-class stars to see if they too have strange dimming patterns or some sort of oval-shaped object blocking out their light from time to time. If so, then we know that we have something very strange and quite possibly artificial on our hands. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe. It's incredibly important to the future of my channel. And also, if you'd like to support my future activities in Boca Chica and elsewhere, make sure to check the description. And as always, stay angry about space.